Today's topic of discussion is measurement scales. This video will look at defining measurement and discuss the various levels of measurement that include nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio scales. But first, let's discuss measurement. Measurement is the systematic attribution of numbers to objects or events. There are four levels of measurement scales, nominal, ordinal, interval, and lastly, ratio. First up is the nominal scale. As the name implies, through such a scale, one can assign a code to measure its values. A data set is said to be nominal if each value or observation can be assigned a code in the form of a number, where the numbers are simply labels. For example, in a data set, males may be coded as 0 and females as 1. In another case, the answer to a question can be categorized as 1 in the case of yes and 0 in the case of no. Nominal scales may be used for renaming, which happens when each item of an answer is given a different number or renamed with a number. Nominal scales are also used for categorical scaling, which occurs when objects are divided into exclusive subgroups. Let's move on to the ordinal scale. It is a measurement level with the property of magnitude, but not the property of intervals. Ordinal scales are one notch up from the nominal scale, since it incorporates the inherent attribute of order. Ordinal variables allow us to rank the items we measure in terms of which has more of the quality represented by the variable. But they do not allow us to say how much more. Hence, when ordering, ranking, or rank ordering is involved, the possibility of an ordinal scale should be examined. For example, we can use the Likert scale to measure the agreement to a statement, that is, on a continuum from strongly agree to strongly disagree. The socioeconomic position of families is another example of an ordinal scale. It's time to discuss the interval scale. It is a measurement scale in which the distance between any two adjacent units of measurement or intervals is equal, but it doesn't have a rational zero. Interval scale scores can be added and subtracted, but not meaningfully multiplied or divided. For example, the time gap between the beginning of 2010 and 2011 is the same as the time interval between 2022 and 2023, but it doesn't have a rational zero or a starting point. The time is measured in AD, but it doesn't mean that time didn't exist before AD. Interval variables allow us to rank order the measured elements and also quantify and compare the amounts of discrepancies between them. Temperature, for example, as measured in Fahrenheit or Celsius, is an interval scale. We can argue that a temperature of 20 degrees is higher than a temperature of 10 degrees. But as the interval scale doesn't have a rational zero, dividing is not feasible. Last but not least is the ratio scale. Ratio scales have all three measurement properties, magnitude, intervals, and rational zero. The increased power of a rational zero enables meaningful interpretation of numerical ratios. For example, income, where we can state that the income of X is 4,000 and that of Y is 2,000. Then one can state that the income of X is twice that of Y. Time, income, and age measurements are common examples of ratio scales. There are certain things to keep in mind when studying measurement scales. Always remember that the objective of choosing a specific scale depends on the research questions. No measuring system is flawless, but some may be better than the others, depending entirely on the research objective. Data analysis depends on the measurement scale, which is why it is very important to choose the right scale. And finally, 
the important consideration is whether a scale is appropriate for the task at hand rather than whether it is nominal, ordinal, interval or ratio. And with that, we have reached the end of this video. We hope this was helpful and we look forward to seeing you with a new one very soon. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.